Hi guys, welcome back to another Creative Tab tutorial. I know, we're doing intros now, weird. This tutorial looks at colour management and how we manage different files with inside of Nuke. So, let's dive on in and take a look. Okay, so to understand colour management, there's a few things that we need to understand first before we go into Nuke, but I'm going to talk to them and then I'm going to show you examples of it in Nuke just to kind of support what I'm saying. So we need to kind of firstly understand what sRGB means and what a linear workflow is, okay? Before we get to that, we need to understand what a gamma curve is. Now, you probably heard gamma before, even if you're working in Photoshop, stuff like that. Um, so what is a gamma cur curve? Well, a gamma curve is a method of correcting images to make sure that they display correctly on the screen, okay? So it's similar to how you would use a curves adjustment in Photoshop. So if you think back to Photoshop, you've got a little um, sort of diagram and then you alter the curves in Photoshop. And it's very similar to that, but why do we need to correct our images to display properly on the screen? Well, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history first, okay? So we're gonna have a little bit of a, take a look back at the original sort of CRT screens. What are CRT screens? They're these old looking screens that we used to use on our computers, okay? They're also known as cathode, cathode ray tube screens. They were, some of you may not remember them, but I definitely remember them. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk you through what exactly is going on here, okay? so. Your old CRT screen had a built-in hardware problem whereby, unfortunately, they were displaying images incorrectly. They would display them a little bit darker than they actually really were. So you can see this here with this diagram. This image to be portrayed on this old glass CRT screen, well, there was a hardware problem in there and it was showing through dark like it is in this image by here. So the scientists and engineers at the time decided instead of correcting the hardware in these screens, Instead of doing that, they would just encode all images that were going to be displayed in these screens. They'd encode them with sort of um, what's called a gamma curve, okay, which would make them brighter. So um, think back now to inside of Photoshop when you've got that curves, okay. So w what we've got is image displayed on the screen, hardware problem, it's too dark. So in order to correct this, instead of calling back every single screen in the world and correcting them, any image that was to ever be shown on this CRT screen was going to be encoded or saved if you want um, with a curve adjusting its brightness so that this whatever image was on there would have a curve like this increasing its brightness so when it plays back it actually plays back like normal okay so because you uploaded there it goes dark so any images that's going to be on that screen have this gamma curve built in and saved into the JPEGs or whatever they are and actually ends up cancelling out the darkness and displaying correctly. Okay, so that's a little bit of a history. Don't ask me why they didn't just fix, fix the hardware. I don't know, it's caused a lot of problems since, which we're going to look at because I know what a lot of you were thinking. What about our modern flat screens, the ones which I'm using now on my PC well? Unfortunately, the problem still exists in modern screens. So like we looked back here, any image would just inherently play back darker on the screen because there was a problem internally. Now, when technology improved and we've got these modern computer monitors, the engineers and scientists were in fact able to correct the issue that these older screens had, but they didn't. Our modern displays, like I said, are built with the same problem as these CRT screens, but this is purposefully done. The worry was the images that were previously encoded, so JPEGs before, any JPEG or PNG before this screen, they were built in with that gamma curve to brighten them. So if we'd corrected the problem in these new screens and then we saw any previously encoded JPEGs, they'd appear far too bright in here. So what they thought is like, well, all JPEGs and kind of PNGs and bitmaps are encoded with this gamma curve. So we don't need to correct that problem because then if we do, it'll appear too bright on here and just right on here. So in order to keep images looking the same across different monitors, you know, these old monitors and these new monitors, they actually didn't correct the problem when they built these screens. So then 
that now creates a few more problems for us again. Um, but what you need to know is that JPEGs, bitmaps, TIFFs, they have this sRGP color space where they have that um, sort of gamma curve, okay? So I'll show you an example of this. I'm just gonna go through file types with an sRGB color space. That's what sRGB means. It's got this gamma curve that brightens the image. So any PNG, bitmap, uh, not all TIFFs, some TIFFs you can save in a different color space, but your JPEGs, your bitmaps, your PNGs, they have this curve built in, okay, to make sure that they're correctly playing back on your screen. Otherwise, they would look darker, whatever screen you've got, if, if it's the old ones or the new ones, okay? So all of these images have an sRGB color space, which is a gamma curve of 2.2. 2.2 is just this value that we've increased the curve by here. Again, think back to the curves in Photoshop, it's the same thing. It's just embedded, that little word here, embedded into these um, image file types, okay? Now, moving on to Nuke. You may have heard that you can use uses a linear workflow. So what is a linear workflow? Let's let's have a look. We've already established that a TIFF image, for example, or a JPEG, most TIFF images and JPEGs have this gamma 2.2. They have this so they will display back appropriately and at the correct brightness on our screens. Because again, even these modern screens display images darker, so we have to correct it with this. Now Nuke works in a linear color space, and what that means is Nuke's color space, instead of having this, when you're looking at Nuke view, instead of having this sort of gamma curve applied to it, it it's just a linear curve. Think linear line, okay? So it, it's kind of, it doesn't automatically brighten images. Now, I'm going to explain a little bit more of what actually happens under the hood, okay? Because remember, Nuke is linear. So what happens then when you import a TIFF or a JPEG, which has got this gamma curve into Nuke? Because everything Nuke does, it does in a linear manner. So let's have a look at what happens. We've got our image, um, and we're going to import that image, let's call it a TIFF or JPEG, into Nuke. And it's got this gamma curve of 2.2. So like we said, Nuke likes to work in this linear manner. Anything that you do compositing-wise or anything that you do in there, it wants to do it in a linear workflow. But we can't work linear when we're importing something with a gamma curve of 2.2 to brighten the image. So this is what happens inside of Nuke, okay? Essentially, your image comes in, if it's, got, if it's in sRGB color space, it comes in with that curve. Nuke then applies the opposite to this curve. You can see the red is actually the opposite to that blue. Okay, so Nuke applies the opposite to the sRGB curve, which is your red one, resulting in a linear image, your purple, ready for compositing. So image comes in, it's got this gamma curve. Nuke then applies the inverse to it, which actually results in an image which has got now a linear curve on it. So it's not brightened, it's not darkened at all. Okay, so it's, yeah, what happens then is all your compositing work is done inside of Nuke in a sort of linear manner. Anything you do, it, it's done to it in a linear manner. However, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. When you're viewing it, when you're viewing the Nuke viewer, it's actually applying an sRGB curve just to what you're seeing so that it displays at the correct brightness. The work is actually going on at a linear kind of level, but it's applying this curve back to your viewer just so you see it correctly. Because remember, you've got to see it on your screen. Then finally, when you are when you write out your kind of um, final composite, let's say to a MOV file, this sRGP curve is reapplied because when you play that video file back in QuickTime Viewer or whatever, you want it to be the correct brightness for your screen. So just to really quickly reiterate, You've got your TIFF, you've got your JPEG or whatever coming in. It's got a, if it's in sRGB, it's got a gamma curve of 2.2. Nuke then applies the inverse to this and it ends up linearizing the image sequence or, or just the same single image. Any compositing work then that you do to it inside is done in a linear workflow. However, when you're looking at it in the viewer, Nuke's viewer applies an sRGB curve so that you can see how it would actually look. And then when you render it out, let's say to a mob, um, if it's an sRGB color space that you render to or export to, then this curve will be reapplied. So when you play it back, it'll look, I don't know, I don't want to use the word legit, but it'll, it'll look like it should look, okay? So 
what we're going to do is we're going to actually put this into context now. I'm going to show you um, some a, a little demo with inside of Nuke. Okay, so let's take a look at what Nuke is doing to linearize this image. If we hit S on our keyboard, we'll go to the project settings, and if we come to the color tab, if you come down and click where is it S R G B? There it is. This is what Nuke is doing now. Let's go back. We know the TIFF is coming in with a gamma curve of 2.2 up there. And when we come into the project settings and click sRGB, you can see that's because this image is coming in as an sRGB image, this inverse curve is going to be applied. So what actually ends up happening, once that is applied, our footage is now linearized. But remember I said earlier, when we view it in the viewer, it's actually, we could do anything like grade it and do it, whatever we do to it, it's doing it in a linear fashion, okay? However, look up here, it says sRGB. The reason it says that is that's how we're viewing it back. So you could view, if you go to none, this is what the image actually looks like when it's been linearized. So um, let's just change it back just so we can see this. Comes in like that, we inverse it and it's linearized. However, it's showing us back in RG, sRGB just so we can kind of see what things look like realistically to us. So if we want to see it, it is linearized, but it's showing us back at sRGB. If you want to, if you want to, you can just click none and that's how it's looking. Just remember, when you write the image sequence or move .mov file back out, you'll actually be encoding a color space in there. So if I were to click a write node, you can see, let's say I just go, um, Oh, let's save this somewhere as, um, there we go, home, okay, film.mov. I'm not actually going to render this out, but let's just say I've, I've, I'm writing out a .mov file. What you'll see is my right node will now change, and where's color space? Default gamma 2.2, okay, it's going to apply a gamma of 2.2, which is sRGB, okay, uh, essentially the same thing. Uh, so you can change that to sRGB or whatever, and it'll actually reapply that curve, okay, when we write it out. So, you may have also heard of EXR files before, or DPX files, or Cineon files. Now, they, don't, they aren't sRGB files, so that makes things a little bit different, doesn't it? Well, let's talk about EXR files. So, when you're rendering images in CG from Maya, we should be using EXR files. This is because... EXR files give you a linear color space, and we've already learned that Nuke likes to work in a linear color space. So why should we work in linear? Well, compositing in linear makes the process simpler for the computer to calculate, simpler for you, and your images will look more natural, and you, you've got a lot more control with EXRs as well. You can, you can render multiple passes, um, multiple render passes, and they're 32-bit files. So there's loads of reasons why we should use EXRs. Um, and remember, EXRs are actually linear. So what happens to an EXR file when we import it into Nuke? Well, let's go take a look. So we've got an EXR file here, and you can tell that by double-clicking, and we've got the extension .exr, which we were just talking about in the presentation. Now before, when we had a TIFF, we had to apply an inverse curve to cancel out this sRGB curve. But what happens when we've got linear? Because the footage doesn't need to necessarily be linearized for Nuke. Well, like we said, it comes in a linear workspace, Nuke likes it, and essentially it does nothing to it because the footage is already linear. So any comp work, any compositing work now takes place. But remember, Nuke is actually applying an sRGB curve to this image. Even though this image is coming as linear, it is applying a color space up here called sRGB. So this isn't how the image actually looks like in linear color space. Remember, we have to click none, and that's how it looks like, how it looks, okay? So you've probably got loads of, loads more detail in the highlights and the uh, shadows because it's an EXR file 32-bit. Okay, so let's just look back to sRGB because when we export it to something like a .mov or whatever, it's going to apply this sRGB curve because that's what screen, that's the way, the way screens need it encoded to actually play it back in the correct brightness, okay? So just remember that EXRs will come in as Nuke wants them, so it doesn't really have to do anything to them. We just do our little comp work. When we look at them in the viewer, we are actually looking at them through an sRGB color space, okay? So we've got another file in here, and it's called a Cineon file, okay? And you can tell that, double-click it, and we've got Cineon, C-I-N, okay? 
So I haven't actually got a little breakdown for this one because I wanted to explain it, or I wanted you guys to kind of guess what's going on. Let's have a look at the project settings. So if we go to color, we know it's a Cineon file. And let's have a look. Um, where is it? Cineon. There we go. So this is applying a curve like that. Okay, so goes straight for a little while and then does a sudden curve upwards. So remember when we looked at the sRGB, the curve that Nuke applies is the inverse of what's coming in. So a Cineon file, it needs a Cineon inverse color space. So the Cineon file would be coming in something like that, okay? So you can kind of picture in your head, I didn't want to draw it out, I wanted you to kind of guess what's going on, but essentially, a Cineon file comes in with the opposite of this because then Nuke applies this to it to linearize it. And remember, even though it's linearized it, we are looking back at it in an sRGB color space. And you can change this to Rec 709 if you wish, because some, if you're looking on a sort of HD television, because um, some people will do that, because if you're making something for television, televisions tend to work in Rec 709, although there is a few other. REC or REC color spaces out there now, like the 1886, but I won't get into them. Um, but yeah, so you're looking at it through an sRGB. So when this Cineon file had the inverse curve applied to it and it got linearized, this is what the linearized version looks like, okay? So that is the kind of linear color space workflow explained to you. And I, I do hope that you understood that. Just remember, all your JPEGs originally, the reason they had that gamma curve, let's just view it, the reason they had this gamma curve built in is because screens at first had this hardware defect, they displayed everything too dark, and then to counteract that, any image that was to ever be shown on a screen would be encoded brighter so that it plays back normal. But then when they did the new screens, well, they didn't fix the problem because they wanted all images to look the same across all monitors, okay? Nuke then needs to apply the inverse because it likes to work in this linear workflow, even though it shows us back with a gamma two of 2.2 sRGB because that's what we most of the time write out our final project as, okay? So I really hope that made sense. If not, um, leave a comment below and I'm happy to kind of explain more. If this did help you, give it a like, give it a share, share it to some of your friends, um, comment on what you want to see next, and cheers for tuning in.